So good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time to join us today. It's a sunny morning. I, Mr. Sri Ram, welcome you all on the behalf of K R Mangalam University as we talk about how immersive technologies are changing the game in this world. So to make sure that we are helping you as much as we can, we have a chat box, chat box to post your uh, questions and queries. We have a collaboration with GBR, Siemens, IBM, Symmetrix. So today we are highly grateful to Ms. Priyanka Nair, one of our industry partners, JBI Academy. She is manager academics there. She is MTech and PhD from Manipal University. Uh, she is also an MBA in HR. She has been graduated um, in computer science and engineering from WITS Mesra. She is experienced in working with the industries and research and development for more than 10 years. Currently, she is leading the academic vertical of our academic collaboration at JB Academic Alliance. She is technically aligned to the arena of data science and analytic and works on the building solutions to the voluminous and ambiguous data world. She has expertise in visual analytics, remote sensing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. To carry this discussion forward, we have Mr. Arvind Kumar, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department of KR Mangalam University. He is MTech in, mechan in Mechanical Design and associated with the university for the long time. Prior to joining the university, he has worked at various positions in the industries and worked with the R&D for more than 10 years. He has published several research papers in reputed national and international journals. <clears throat> so we welcome you both. <clears throat> Thank you, Siddharth, sir, for your kind words. So good morning, everyone. This is Arvind uh, from Kermulam University uh, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So, uh, so the uh, warm welcome to all of you. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has turned everything upside down in previous years, everyday lives, businesses and educational institutions halted their operations due to the pandemic restrictions, which gave rise to the new era for emerging technologies. This uncertain time has taught us a new way to live with virtual operations. Immersive technology is an integration of virtual content, content uh, with the physical environment in a way that allows the user to engage naturally with the blended reality. User accepts virtual elements as a part of environment. It includes augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, uh, holography, digital twins, etc. AR VR headsets, 3D display, gesture, and speech recognition are supporting technologies for immersive experience. Uh, uh, we have entered into the industrial collaborations with GP Academy. Uh, this industry is expertise in data and AI, cloud, business agility, security, training and learning, software development, product management and quality improvement. Uh, we are running a one course in their collaboration with ZB Academy. Also, Madam, uh, we have more collaborations with different industries like Siemens, IBM, Symmetrix, Bosch, GrabCard, CDEC, Noida. Uh, Jyotiman, these collaborations are very wonderful for the future point of view. Uh, we have our wonderful speaker, Ms. Priyanka Nair with us. Now I request Ms. Priyanka Nair to elaborate more about how immersive technology works and benefits our industries. Very good morning to everyone present here. Uh, I'm very thankful to uh, Sri Ram Sir and Arvind Sir for such a warm welcome. So um, it's a very interesting topic that we are discussing today. That's how immersive technology is changing the game. So before I start answering questions by Arvind Sir, I would like to share my screen and please let me know once it's visible. 
It's visible, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. So how immersive technology is changing the game? As Irvinsir has said the context, so we are emerging, we are evolving in the digital space and we are not just limited to any you know, software development or the, or the traditional or the conventional technology, digital transformation spaces that we used to know. We are basically now entered the dimension of creating the virtual and the real experiences for different industries and individuals. So before I answer the question that what is immersive technology and what are the benefits, I would like you to have a glimpse on the picture that is there on the screen. Now, I hope that this gives you some, you know, analogy to something that you're witnessing today, some eye gear, some, you know, headset. But then this was the sword of Democles. This is the past. If we think that immersive technology, the term that we'll discuss shortly is a recent thing, but this was a part of 1960s. Now, why this is called the Sword of Democles is because you can see the huge device that is there on head of somebody and you cannot really wear it in public because if it falls on your head, you'll die. So that's like an evolution that we are tracing. It's just like the computers evolved the immersive technologies are also evolving, and let's see how it is. Oh, excuse me. What, what exactly is the world? I'm pretty sure that you have seen some devices like these in the present world. Immersive are past the hype now, and it is being used in different industry. And very, uh, you know, you can witness this specifically in the gaming and the entertainment, specifically the sci-fi movies. I'm certain that you guys have must seen these uh, fancy glasses that is, uh, you know, that is being worn by the superheroes or, uh, uh, you know, some fancy machines. But that's not, uh, you know, uh, that's not something of the entertainment world. That's for real. And in few years, we might have to reset our minds to start interacting with the digital information. Coming to the exact point of what is immersive technology. Now, immersive technology is basically blending or merging your digital world to your actual world to create some you know, different experiences and outcomes uh, for different in uh, for different industries, you can see an umbrella, a red umbrella on the screen, and I have put some three uh, you know acronyms on the screen: AR, MR, and VR. Immersive technology is the umbrella under which we have augmented reality AR, we have mixed reality reality MR, and virtual reality MR uh, VR. Uh, you Rinkerman. would. Uh, Rinkerman. Yes, uh, actually, I want to interrupt you in this. Uh, actually, as we are uh, more concerned about technology, so from that point of view, what exactly is immersive technology? So immersive technology is basically merging the two worlds, Arvind, sir. So, you know, right now I'm present in this real world. And then imagine I can wait. Witness a, a different, you know, I can witness the universe. I can be in the universe right by sitting in my room. I mean, that's being, uh, you know, uh, being the capability of immersive technology. And like I said that, you know, uh, it's, it's a very thin line when we talk about AR, MR and VR right now. And these immersive technologies are bringing some experiences where we do not have to be really present there, but we can actually experience all those things right sitting at you know where i am so that's the uh, that's the uh, power of immersive technology that we can see and like i said that this is not something of the past uh, th that is not something that is right now this has been from the past and we have been just evolving we realized the importance of immersive technology after covid because covid somehow pushed us to the digital world and we were when we were pushed onto this digital world we realize what digital transformation can do in different spaces. And this space of immersive technology, now we are living in the world of metaverse. That's the new world that we have entered, the metaverse that we are entering, where the interaction right now is being on a video. I can enter a metaverse 
uh, you know, conference and have an actual, uh, you know, experience of one-to-one -one interaction. So that's the uh, immersive technology that we are working with. And with three essentials of AR, MR, and VR. How is it game, you know, how is it changing the game now? So this has pushed the boundaries of, you know, how we really interact and understand the digital world. And this immersive technology is making its way into every industry. Like I said that, you know, when we think of this AR, VR, we are just thinking of some movies, you know, some superhero movies that we have seen or some interesting sci-fi movies that we have seen. Uh, we also witness it, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure we have very young students here who have interest in gaming. Uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, gone to smash uh, spaces where you get to play in these, you know, VR and AR uh, based gaming, you know, you, we already have it in, uh, you know, place there. So it provides benefits to different companies. Now, why, uh, you know, it is being vastly employed in different industries is because I don't have to really put in some actual efforts to do something. I can have it witnessed in the simulated environment. I'm saving my cost because my physical presence is not really uh, required. My investments in infrastructure is not really required. My time is saved. My effort is saved. Uh, my entire focus in the you know quicker development of the products and services. So that's how the immersive game, uh, the immersive technology has been changing the game and it has just accelerated after the pandemic that hit our world. I would like you uh, to take a glimpse on this immersive technology specifically in 2021 and how that is predicted in the next 10 years. Now, this is just a prediction and I'm sure that this is, you know, may have more accelerated growth. Uh, maybe, you know, after uh, five years, it could have some, you know, other triggers that are happening for the market, uh, you know, a glimpse that we see on the screen. Um, so the market region in 2021, specifically, you can see that what has been the market, specifically in North America, European uh, countries, uh, Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa, here the immersive technologies are being employed with a major um, market share out there. Um, if I talk about the application areas, though I have just, you know, put some four application areas, maybe the education, the training, uh, the products and services, the sales, however, it is, you know, the application areas are still present in different almost all industries who want to grow on an accelerated pace. If I talk about the component, there are three components that we can see it presents, the hardware industries, the softwares, and the services. Uh, you can see the hardware services has the maximum percentage of immersive technology presence out there because they are working on their products in the simulated environment to know what their customer likes, will it succeed, will it fail? So that's the maximum component that immersive technology is there. Uh, there, are, there is a very, uh, you know, two very uh, uh, interesting market insights that I've put on the screen. Uh, uh, augmented reality is being employed in the healthcare sector, specifically for the patient facing engagement uh, in a very, very interesting manner. And it is being used across our country and globally, yes, the US has the maximum employment of immersive technology right now. And uh, our country is, you know, yet to be there definitely for that, uh, you know, percentage of incorporation. The education system, uh, I remember in our childhood, we used to be taught the disaster management, uh, you know, uh, strategies, uh, mitigation strategies, the earthquake, the floods, the students are actually in the simulated environment when an earthquake is happening and they know what to do. So we do mock drills. Now we don't need the mock drills. They can actually be in the simulated environment where they are not in danger, but then they can be prepared for danger. So these are the they, very they interesting- They simulation zones. Absolutely. So, you know, we yeah. used to, so uh, before this, we have heard about mock drills, you know, fire alarms, you know, yeah. uh, we are doing it in actual where people are coming, you know, uh, having a fire thing, you know, how do we really uh, are behaving in such a, are we 
uh, you know, do we get stuck there or we take 10 different actions to come out of that situation. But then that simulated environment just give, you know, just makes them prepare for, uh, you know, a future thing that might or might not happen, but then they know what to do the best using this immersive. So we are not really actually understanding that it's present and it's going to be a part of life uh, after some time. You had one question that how is it, uh, you know, impacting the industries? Uh, there are five things that I would like to, you know, specifically mention when I talk about the corporates or the industries or from the business perspective, connecting with the customers has never been easier, uh, you know, than with the immersive technology. I now know what my customer exactly wants because I'm giving them the exact product replicated before it's being developed and they can tell me that they love it or they don't love it. So my product uh, you know, success or failure in the market becomes very clear to me very much in the beginning. Very easy, you know, very basic thing that has been achieved by immersive, basic and the most important. My product design and development cycle has been, you know, has the speed has really increased. It is a quicker development that I can think of. The market, the industries works on products and services, the quicker I'm able to deliver the products, the, the benefit is for the end user and as an industrialist also. Training the employees. I think, uh, you know, for specifically for the software students, they spend six months on training after they graduate, uh, you know. So now these immersive technologies are preparing them, training them in the simulated environment uh, so that they're ready for the projects before they are actually, you know, deployed on the project. So the training of employees have been very, uh, you know, uh, has been a very interesting contribution of immersive technologies. And we'll see some use cases shortly also. Working more efficiently, yes, my speed has increased, my customers are happy, my employees are trained, my efficiency has gone to some next level. The talent, I can attract the right people to work in the businesses so that they know that they are working in the right space and I know that I'm bringing the right talent. So this immersive technology, like I said, has a lot of potential to make our lives easier. Digitally, we our lives have been easier, but then the evolution that we are seeing in this digital space is just, uh, you know, beyond our imagination. So that, that's the answer to your question, Arvind, sir, yes, that yes. what is immersive and, you know, how do we see that in industries? What is the difference between this virtual reality, augmented and mixed reality? So so definitely, uh, Arvind, so when, we, when I talked about that umbrella of immersive, we saw three, augmented reality, mixed reality, and the virtual reality. Now, um, I, I consider, I feel, I have observed that, you know, people consider all these three as same, but then yes, there's a thin line between them. So let's have a look at what is the thin line, what is AR, VR, MR, and how do we, you know, uh, look at them, you know, individually. When I talk about virtual reality, so, uh, you know, in my childhood, I've always felt like I wish I could, uh, you know, enter the space and the universe and I could see the planets revolving around me, the stars, the galaxy. That time it wasn't possible, but then today it is possible. I can be on Mars. I can be working with Albert Einstein. I can be experimenting with them. And that's absolutely a possibility because of virtual reality. Now, what does that mean? Virtual reality has, repli I mean, it's a replacement of my reality to a digital form. So it, it is just disconnecting me from the real and it is, you know, entering into a dimension that is whichever dimension I want to enter and experience, virtual reality has made it possible. So that's the, uh, you know, power of virtual reality, very basic. It is replacing my reality with the digital content. Um, I can introduce any cell in a human body and check whether it's working or not. I cannot do it in real, the person might die. But then in my virtual uh, reality, I can introduce anything in my body and, and see if I get some supernatural power maybe. 
So that is the capability of virtual reality and not, um, you know, it's not something unreal. It is real in the unreal world. So that's a uh, virtual reality. Now, when I talk about augmented reality, augmented reality is the most basic and we are doing it every day. Um, so the participants and even I use Snapchat, TikTok a lot. And why the Snapchat has become popular is I can become a dog. I can become a cat or I can become more beautiful or, uh, you know, my hair can grow, you know, suddenly or I can have a boy pick or something like that. Why? Because these so augmented reality is in real, but it's just enhancing my reality with digital content. I look a certain way. It just enhances, you know, in the manner I want. So uh, you can see that there's a girl out there on the screen with some specs. She looks like an alien. So if I, you know, want to, you know, see myself as an alien or some princess, I can do it on my uh, Instagram or maybe Snapchat. And we are using it daily. And have you realized we are using augmented reality daily? You can see a dog. I can have a blush around it. That's social media content. If I talk about uh, the businesses, Lakme or lens cut, what they have done, just you know, putting a camera in front of your face, I can check different shades of the cosmetics or I can try different glasses to see if it's suiting my you know, face or not. So that's another thing in my reality, I can you know, test and try different spaces out there. So if I, so another interesting thing uh, that you can do, so anyone who wants to you know, move into a new space, decorating their home, uh, you know, own, uh, you know, house or maybe a hostel room. I don't know if you can play around with your hostel room or your PG. Uh, you can see something on the screen when I'm putting the device onto the, uh, you know, uh, a room and it shows me what is the best thing I can place the room with so that it looks good rather than bringing all the furniture first and then seeing if it's looking good in my home. I can first test through a, a you know, a digital content. Does a particular sofa or a, uh, or a TV suits on a particular wall or a room? That is augmented reality. And augmented reality is something that we are using and experiencing daily. So uh, that's the interesting part of augmented reality. That is enhancing our, uh, our reality with the digital content. No, uh, ma'am, um, if I if I have to say it in a very simple word, you know, so when we talk of virtual reality, right, what we are doing is we are moving into a virtual world which absolutely. does not exist in reality. Absolutely. But we happen to be a part of it by virtue of this technology. Now, the very word augmented means to support. That is the meaning of augment. So when we say augmented reality, what we are doing is reality is reality, right? You are you, right? And your room is your room, but you want to augment it. You want to support it, okay? And you want to visualize how would it be, right? So uh, a wonderful example given over here is that, uh, uh, you have the word of Lakme, you can try out anything you need not. I remember earlier, you know, uh, you know, ladies going on over there, trying the cosmetic on their right. hands right. and all that and trying to see it and all. Now you need mm -hmm. not do those kind of things, you know. And uh, uh, as far as uh, virtual reality is concerned, ma'am gave very examples. Uh, one of my friends, uh, he is doing medical and uh, what they're doing now is they are learning surgery on virtual world itself, you know, like a certain portion of the uh, body is created. You can create it in your own dormitory, yeah. right? And then you can uh, continue to do surgery 10 times. You don't need a, a body now, right? As we earlier used to learn of the anatomy like that. But now anatomy can be learned in a very different way. And what an experience it would be that if I become, uh, you know, like a really minuscule 
small human being and enter into my own eye and see the inside of the eye itself right now that's so you can imagine what this experience would be like okay this is what exactly virtual reality and augmented reality so please concentrate on this word v and a okay a is actually augmenting supporting enhancing the reality you are in v is carrying you to a different world like you can have an experiment with the einstein as ma'am said you can be on mars you can be inside your body and see various organs how do they function and so on so forth am i right ma'am i have rightly absolutely, understood absolutely sir absolutely i think you know that that's that's what i say uh, you know that uh, virtual reality that's just making our you know all the fantasies and our dreams come true in reality i mean we are in an unreal world in reality so that's that's virtual and augmented like you said it's an enhanced so v and a are really important that that's that's yeah. the right so way. virtual is actually making us dream more yeah right yes. Yes. <laughs> absolutely so <laughs> right so uh, the third aspect so uh, you know beautifully put by uh, ashok sir the v and a when i mix them both i get the mixed reality that's the word in itself the mixed reality uh, now the mixed reality is bringing the best of the two worlds of the virtual and the augmented reality you can see something on the screen uh, you know somebody is moving their hand and the device or the machine is working like that uh you know i feel like you know i i have got some super power that i'm moving my hand and you know everything around me is moving as per my gestures now this was something uh, that was not imaginable few years back but then this is happening right now i don't even have to touch a particular machine or a device to move it around my uh, you know effort is not required just by my gestures i move my hand the the machine moves so that's so the virtual reality you can see you know majorly the virtual reality has these uh, you know headgears and these sensors and these uh, you know hologram so hologram microsoft hologram is the best, best example out here for the mixed reality which can be used to move the machines or any devices or to interact with any spaces without even touching it so holograms microsoft holograms so guys if you are uh, you know really interested to know more about something that is happening on the screen because i don't have much time to you know elaborate more but then please do go and find out about microsoft holograms you will find amazing stories out there and amazing amazing use cases out there so we have you know seen three so, things out there. Uh, we 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 can virtually transport someone you know from one place to another place now looks like this that the person has been transferred to a conference right. okay you are interacting with that person whereas that person is actually sitting in america absolutely you are yes. sitting in india okay so this is what exactly is uh, uh, when ar and vr are combined okay. together right so uh, this is how the world is changing uh, fast uh industry is changing fast you need not touch the machine in a way you are just giving directions and you are not there right the machine is somewhere else you are somewhere else looks like as if you are very close right Yes. Absolutely. It it just you know makes me uh, feel like I've got some you know powers with me that I'm able to run the world just at my you know fingertip. So that that's the you know uh, the the very very interesting part of these immersive technology and not no. just for yes your uh, we used to read about it you know in the fictions. Yes. Oh, he it's just absolutely. waved his hand and the things were moving and all that, but. Now yeah it is a reality before us and being a computer science uh, professional i feel so fortunate that you know i'm able to you know study inquire you know learn about these technologies that can actually bring those you know 
uh, fiction books or movies to some real life. And I can seriously feel that this space can make a difference to a lot and lot of industry. Not just feel, it's the fact that it is making a difference and it will make a difference too. So, uh, so like Ashok sir said that, you know, what's the exact difference? So if I have to look at AR, MR and VR, AR is the digital content from the virtual world on top of the real environment, just augmenting my reality. Mixed reality, I'm bringing the virtual and the environment mix and they are interacting with each other. The virtual reality, immersive virtual environments, shutting out my real world. So you can see all three, uh, AR, VR and MR on the screen that we have just you know, talked about individually. What's the we had uh, so we had fantastic explanations about AR, VR, MR. I hope to our participants, uh, the very idea of immersive technology is clear now. If you have any question, please feel free to ask before we proceed further. And you can write your question or you can write in the chat box to us and we will respond. So please feel free to interact you have a wonderful opportunity might be many things might be coming to your mind now all right okay please feel free so so far we don't see maybe the explanations are so wonderful so everything has been understood uh, so we can proceed further I think for the students who are thinking that I'm not the Iron Man, man nor I'm a part of a Star Wars movie, I don't need immersive technology to be, you know, known. I just want to uh, watch something and enjoy it. No, it's not, you know, from the beginning I have been focusing. Please get, you know, above the gamings and the entertainment. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, down the tech journey, you know, uh, we have discussed about this a lot, 360 degree immersive implementation from media, education, automobile to entertainment. These businesses are growing exponentially and 67% of businesses have really adopted this tech journey and that's the game that we are seeing, you know, to change not just so it's not a one day thing that has happened we are just wit witnessing its acceleration after the pandemic hit us because you know we had nothing to you know do but explore the different digital spaces and metaverse is something that is uh, you know the future for us and for that uh, you need to you know at least know being in this you know right now sitting at this uh, you know, space, you, you ought to know what is immersive technology, you ought to know what is virtual, what is real. Next time you go, you know, explore a lens card, you should know that you're working on augmented reality. Next time you make a, a you know, a, a story, a, 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 snap, a Snapchat story, you know. Next time you go gaming on Smash, you know it's a virtual reality that you're working on or maybe augmented reality. So that's tech journey down the tech journey for immersive technologies. The revolution. Immerso, there are three interesting use cases that I would like you to go home and uh, find more about it because immersive technologies are revolutionizing everything from theme parks to daily life. So I'll just, uh, you know, quickly take one interesting use case. I'm, I'm sure most of you are, uh, you know, uh, love KFC or uh, you have definitely heard about KFC. That's a very interesting uh, thing about KFC, why they are very popular, you know, why? Because there are a lot of, uh, you know, foodie trees that delve in the same domain that KFC, uh, you know, delves in. But then the texture and the flavor of KFC fried chicken specifically is very unique. How do they do that? You know, everywhere they have the same consistent taste and flavor. KFC has a VR game system set up that makes, that trains the employees to make fried chicken. So basically everyone is working in a simulated environment using a game, making their fried chicken. I don't think there will be a slightest of change uh, on any of the KFC uh, outlets that you have your fried chicken. So that's, you know, that's how the employees are trained with KFC. You can find more about it on uh, obviously the internet. 
uh, you can see a picture on my screen. China has built this $1.5 billion virtual theme park. And this is not, I mean, there is nothing that is actually happening at all. You can witness the entire theme park virtually. You don't have to really go to China or, you know, or any other spaces and uh, actually, uh, you know, ride along these theme parks. That's the China VR park. Very interesting, very, very uh, popular uh, use case of immersive technology. One more theme park. So I think I'm, I'm very obsessed with the uh, theme parks because growing up, that, that is something that we all do. Very interesting uh, use case case is Disney Star Wars Galaxy's Edge version for VR and AR. So this is a, a blend of AR and VR. They have the two spaces. One is the physical space where you can visit and augment and witness the augmented reality. You can actually, uh, you know, interact with the physical, uh, you know, spaces. And then they have a complete virtual setup, just like we discussed for China that you can you know just you know travel around the star wars theme park and just uh, experience that all virtually so very you know i, I really like these uh, three uh, you know uh, uh, cases and i've read about it very interesting sometime i wish to um, you know experience disney star wars augmented reality that's what i would like to experience once i think this is the beauty of this uh, technology absolutely so See it on the imagination only. Yeah, absolutely. And witnessing it around. So again, you know, I have been working out on the, you know, the, the fancy uh, things out there. That's real for sure. Where do we see this immersive environment going to scales? Conducting job interviews. Very interesting things some companies and as an industry, I can say that they're working on is gender neutral uh, hiring to happen so they provide avatars to the uh, to somebody who is there for hiring so that there are no discrimination practices some unique way of hiring uh, you know people chronic pain i mean that's something has to play with our head uh, that that's a uh, you know that's a fact that when we think about that we are feeling we feel more about it Immersive technologies are being used to ease the chronic pain without medication. Uh, so here I would like to quote one uh, example. Paralysis, you know, somebody who has a hand par paralyzed, uh, they can have a mirror virtual with them where that mirrored hand is working. Our mind gets trained to believe that my hand is working fine. And after some time, your hands actually starts working. That's a placebo, you know, very, so it is very, very uh, popular in the medical domain uh, that uh, the see, doctors yeah. are employing that. Yeah. See, what happens is when uh, 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 your physical heart is not working and all that. So the networks in the brain, you know, neural networks, they get loosened up somehow or the other, yeah. right? And uh, they need to be reframed, rewired. So this virtual reality is helping you to rewire your neural networks. And once your neural networks are rewired, the signals which reach your physical parts yes. are there, which become absent because of the brakes, et cetera, or because of the lack of practice itself. So uh, what you see is physiotherapy. This is called neural therapy, actually, neurotherapy, mm -hmm. right? So it's actually going a sea change now, which was earlier not possible, you know? Uh, we used to go for, uh, you know, a uh, hell number of uh, times to a physiotherapist or physiotherapist coming to you and very painful processes and all that. But here, something which is coming to you by virtue of it, you feel yourself, your mind responds. The one point is this. Second point, which is helping from the psychological point of view, from the therapy point of view, it is uh, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, psychosomatic diseases. You see, most of the time you have a feeling 
because your mind has a feeling so it reflects on the body this is what is psychosomatic and all that since it is working at the neuron plane itself and all that and your body responds you see it virtually happening so that gives you a feeling like that so you are able to take care of psychosomatic things you are do, able to do the neural uh, uh, physiotherapy and I'm, I'm saying i'm using the word physio but it is actually neuro uh, that thing right so uh, what we see is this immersive environments are you know if taken to another new heights right and used uh, judiciously uh, they can really change completely our very world our very way of living itself absolutely sir i think cognitive behavioral therapies are using these immersive technologies to treat people of depression the mm -hmm. prisoners the prisoners are ma being made fit for the society by training through immersive using you know these uh, behavioral therapies through uh, immersive technologies so uh, there are we have just entered a new dimension altogether uh, it's just that we are uh, limiting our beliefs to a, to one sector but then it's 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 present everywhere and it's going to scale to every level so you can witness it around in every space that you go so so that's that's your answer arvind sir i think i've taken out you i mean a very long uh, you know a way <laughs> to explain what is ar vr and mr but then you know it's it's pretty interesting you know it, it this world uh, seems very interesting to me though it is not a tech, i mean a single handed technology it's a blend of different technologies uh, but then uh, yes it's making a change i think this is the one of the application in healthcare and medical devices absolutely this is the major part where it can uh, contribute this technology uh i'm sure these examples will help uh, many of our students to come out with new ideas right and then come out with new uh, uh ways how this technology can be because they are the futures ultimately it is hardware software and all right so they are the going they are the ones who are going to prepare software they are the ones who are going to prepare the hardware right Absolutely. from the future angle and hence new kind of professions also emerging out of it Uh, man, uh, uh, what are the different areas of uh, immersive technology? As we were discussing about healthcare and medical appliances, uh, what so are the I other think, applications? Yeah, so I think Arvind sir, one application area you only said of uh, immersive mm -hmm. technology. So I would like to you know present it you know uh, to uh, you know to everyone present here how we are diagnosing and treating it well using the immersive technology. And Ashok mm -hmm. sir also said that the surgeons are using uh, these immersive technology to treat the patients. If I directly so surgeons are known to be you know the people who have the life and death in their hand. But then imagine if that can be more you know your life can be more protected. where their experimentations can be virtually not on the real body in itself so you can see on the screen that's how uh, you know things can happen they can interact with the human anatomy you know they can they can just you know enlarge it see the exact points where things can be worked out with the right manner so the healthcare is using the potential of immersive technology the maximal and it is saving lives in a better manner that we used to do earlier so earlier i remember the, all the experimentations were done on animals and then humans and then you know we used to you know get some uh, the the best results out of it but then we can see that thing uh, i still remember uh, uh, the head of all india institute mr uh, dr guleria saying uh, he said that when we learned uh, we learned on everything on uh, you know pictures hey. like this is where is the heart this is where it is and when we used to really enter into oh, you know um, uh, surgery doing surgery we we understood very clearly where it is and where it is otherwise it was just a two dimensional thing three dimensional was also absent and all and now look how it is 
absolutely I, I still remember sir hang those skeletons hanging in the biology labs where we were told about the anatomy i think uh, most of the doctors you know entered that profession testing on that hanging uh, skeleton so so i think the world is changing and uh, we are definitely going to be at the next level with this technology in place so healthcare yes Fact, uh, that skeleton was the thing which you said okay this is my lab you know here Absolutely. we learn of this that is the, uh, you know mark the the characteristic <laughs> of a biology lab a hanging skeleton <laughs> yeah yeah another very important uh, space where we are witnessing the uh, contribution of immersive technology is learning through play using immersive technology um uh, immersive technology and education is like a match made in heaven uh, because of i don't know how many of you know the learning pyramid we learn 20% by uh, reading or looking at something we learn a bit more by listening or uh, you know uh, doing something and the third category the third level that we are exploring the potential is through immersive technology you can see a, a, a graphics on the screen where the it's it's a mixed reality by now i'm sure you'll be able to identify what is ar vr and uh, mr so this is a mixed reality right now the the kid is moving a block on the hand she's actually experiencing that block but there's a device that's doing that block uh, you know arrangement for her the learning has become really really easy at a very young age and the grooves we say that we learn you know every one of us have grooves in our brain that those grooves have been deepened by exploring the potential of immersive technology they are main they are playful impactful and this is sparking the curiosity now this is a, a very small kid uh, this is the same case i mean the learning even the healthcare like ashok sir was mentioning how we learn the learning process becomes easier through you know these you know any of these ar vr or mr depending you know what kind of learning that you are putting in i think uh, this is the best witnessing that we can do in the education space i can uh, being from the education background so i can add on to it you know yes, you see basically we always used to say that how we can uh, use maximum number of senses the more yeah. the senses are used the more is the print on the brain more stronger so what we are doing through this is that we are bringing in reality exactly into the life of a child whereas telling only okay imagine go see how it yeah. happened but here exactly they are feeling it you know this is what exactly is the interacting with the reality itself bringing the reality to you interacting and interacting with your whole self Absolutely. so since you are interacting you are feeling you are smelling you are uh, touching everything you are doing the reality is around you and yet it is not okay you need not go to the play field and the play field is there okay so this is exactly because you are using all senses together the prints are fine the memory is uh, deeper deeper and it is long term right retention is more right Yes, talking about the playground sir i have another uh, you know interesting application area of uh, uh, immersive technology tourism uh, tourism has you know this virtual tourism i have written but then nowadays you can actually call this as an immersive tourism there's a term that has been coined that says immersive uh, tourism by now uh, i guess everyone knows that you know how we can uh, you know explore this uh, immersive technology in tourism there are days when i feel so heck you know burdened by work you know i just go home and say i wish i could be at manali or maybe somewhere and then imagine sitting at my home and and i don't have leaves honestly <laughs> i have just uh you know completed my leaves but then i i still need a break i need to so these tours when you travel you feel good about it 
So if I can at least visualize, experience that tourism, being at my place, I think a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the part is done. So basically virtual tourism is taking you to a place where you're not actually present and you can experience the entire thing. You don't have to be physically present. So if on days we are not able to travel, you're not feeling well to travel. You don't have to take a cab or a train, sit back, enjoy the virtual reality of virtual traveling. So that's virtual you, tourism. Uh, no, you, can be, you can be in that very hotel itself when you yes. actually visited Manali, all right? And you can be sleeping on the same bed. Absolutely. So I would have to spend another, you know, cash out there. I'm yeah, saving yeah. my pocket. <laughs> so that's virtual reality. So Arvind sir, I think I can go on and on with the application areas. But then um, I hope that, you know, for, uh, you know, if somebody has to, you know, really relate now where we can use AR, VR or MR by now, I'm sure all of us know what to uh, you know, consider in future for any of uh, the application areas. Uh, Arvind sir, can you hear me? Yes, just to move on. If we are uh, talking about uh, air cloud technology, how it is uh, useful for the world? A uh, very, uh, you know, uh, different terminology that you have put up here, Arvind sir, AR cloud. We have seen what is VR, we have seen what is, uh, you know, MR, AR, VR. But then there is a very unique thing that is out there in the market that's AR cloud. Uh, like I said that no technology can survive, you know, stand alone with a mix of, you know, different technologies and an amalgamation of different technologies. So immersive technology has a lot of contribution from the cloud computing, uh, you know, arena. So before I answer the question that what is AR cloud and how is it making a difference? So uh, a statement was generated by Google that our mission is to organize the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful. See, we are dealing in a lot of media content. We are having a lot of media content that is generated in volume, variety. And if that information is not accessible to me on time, that information has no use. So if I interact with the digital information and it does not uh, you know, uh, come back as an experience in real time, that is a challenge. So that is the new way we want to organize our information and we need the information now. So uh, I would like to, you know, spend one minute on, uh, you know, answering your question that what is AR cloud? Uh, now this AR cloud, the term in itself means that the experience that we are receiving is in real time and in continuous manner. Um, I would just, you know, take one instance to, you know, uh, tell the role of AR cloud. Imagine you are in a, in a very new city, you don't know the language, nothing, you're walking around the street, you feel hungry, and there are some restaurants around and you don't know where to go. The best thing that you can do is you can maybe, you know, put up some glasses or maybe, you know, use some, you know, processes of AR and just see which uh, restaurant has what menu with what review, something like that, uh, you know, something that we do on, um, uh, on Swiggy or Zomato, doing it right, you know, standing on the street, looking around, you know, just you have to put on some glasses, look around and see some star ratings and the menu, you can go and have a good lunch at the place you feel that you are, you know, wanting the favorite uh, cuisine for you. So that's AR cloud. And yes, it's an enhancement to an AR. Uh, so like I said, that there are different technologies that contribute to these immersive technologies. One can find their space in cloud computing, in full stack development, whatever field they want to choose in, they can contribute to the space of immersive technologies. Thank you. Uh, there is the last question uh, I'd like to ask. Uh, what so does before this... that, sir, uh, just one, you know, as okay. a conclusion, I would yeah. like to say here 
uh, for uh, you know AR, VR, and MR that it is just like internets and smartphones that we carry every day. The uh, immersive technology is going to be a part of our daily life. Uh, in the sense, you know, in, in just like the way that we're using internet and smartphones. So that's the future for uh, metaverse. I mean, the, the entering the field of maybe uh, the metaverse. Okay. Yes, that is the future, this uh, immersive technology. Okay. How does uh, this collaboration is going to benefit our students, man? So, Zivia. Uh, like, uh, you know, we know that we have uh, entered uh, the collaboration with Kiar Mangalam University uh, in 2022 uh, for two of the contemporary technologies, cloud computing and full stack development. Uh, now, like I said that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the generation, the students can opt their career and make a contribution to this immersive, uh, to this space of immersive uh, technologies. And Zibia has been catering to nurture the career journey of the students in most of the contemporary technologies. And I'm hoping uh, this collaboration would take or make the journey of students, uh, you know, very, very impactful so that after four years of their graduation or three years of their graduation, they can make a difference to the society. When the industry and academia comes together, there is no stopping. I mean, the, I mean, the, the best of the minds from the academic space and from, you know, some of the practitioners from the industry, what, what more can, you know, somebody have in their initial journey of career? So that's where uh, Zidia uh, collaboration with KR Mangalam University comes into picture. And uh, I would uh, really like to share, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, a, a small, uh, you know, video presentation of how Zibia is making a difference in the higher education space. Sure. Thank you. Our world today has become a just-in-time gratification and businesses everywhere are changing and feeling the need to digitally transform. But the institutions which are supposed to keep us abreast with these changes, like our universities, are finding it difficult to adapt to the radically shifting IT sector and upgrading its systems to match the advancement in the digital world, be it the programming languages or modern technologies. Understandably, it has created a gap between what industry demands and what the academia can offer. This is where Zebia steps in. Zebia is a specialized global IT consultancy and services company focusing on digital transformation strategies that includes agile transformations, DevOps and continuous delivery, big data and data science cloud infrastructures, software development, quality and test automation, software security. Our passion for the latest technologies, our understanding of the current IT trends and our determination for knowledge sharing helps us work in synergy with the universities to offer students cutting edge tools, training and a holistic curriculum to master the ever-shifting digital paradigm. So, what are the key digital trends which are ruling the IT ecosphere? Big Data Machine Learning DevOps Data Sciences Artificial Intelligence Digital Transformation Engineering And how does Zevia help you get closer to these IT trends. Zebia delivers industry-aligned programs and support for faculties and students and forges strong industry-academia partnerships to nurture the right talent by offering e-books for students, lab exercises for students, computer lab planning, instructor slides for faculty, train the trainer program, TTT. Zibia has collaborated with universities primarily to bridge the knowledge gap between students and what industry demands. We are extremely helpful 
to the university and its professors for being extremely supportive in this endeavor. And that we need to bring them to a higher level. And on the other hand, the companies and the governments that need uh, the right skills, the right knowledge, the right people with the right education to help them in the digital journey with subjects like Agile, DevOps, Data Science, Machine Learning, because these are the topics of the future and this will make a big difference for governments, for the government of India, but also for companies across the world. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing this wonderful uh, knowledge with us. Now, I request Aurora sir to throw some light uh, over this. Uh, uh, well, I, it was, uh, uh, I wish it could not end. It was so interesting. And uh, taking us to the new word itself, you know, uh, a new word, I can say emerging word. Uh, uh, in which we really immerse and we become a part of it. I'm sure uh, uh, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, new exercises and new ventures KR Mangalam University is entering into to help the students keep abreast with the uh, future industry world is highlighted over here today in a small way. Right, so uh, no wonder our uh, engineering department is rated third best, right? Why so? Because we are keeping abreast with the latest of the latest training, latest of the latest technology, and we are ensuring that our students really learn uh, and are well equipped when they enter the industry. Now, the second important aspect which we have in KR Mangalam is we teach them learn how to learn. So one is, of course, we make you learn, we give you exposure to the industry, and you know now the exposure is possible through immersive technology in a very different way, right? Uh, so sir is from the uh, mechanical engineering department itself, and we have a collaboration with Siemens, right, in mechanical Siemens. engineering, okay? And uh, imagine the software we have with the Siemens where students are designing different parts of the automobiles and then testing. Why don't you yes, share sir. something about that, sir, a bit? Uh, sir, actually, the Siemens is into you know, modeling analysis, uh, analyzing the, that modeling, and also a part of simulation in which uh, the drafting is the part of modeling in which uh, the students have to make the different drawings. That means 2D drawings for those 3D models. And uh, it's a, the, so the software they will use is Annex. Yeah, you have to add on to Mr. Arvind, sir. So uh, yes. Uh, I have experienced uh, something with Siemens that uh, they have the, their well equipped labs that then they, there we can see the actual parts of the automotive vehicles engine and how can we assemble these parts. This can be experienced very in a very good manner. This is one of the more advanced, we can say it's more interesting application that we see how Siemens come out of it. They will give so, uh, the theory as well as the practical exposure of yeah. different subjects they yeah. are taking. So and this is what the, the uh, so this is what is right. yeah. Uh, so this is what exactly we do in KR Manglam, okay? They need not go to Chennai to have an experience of that and actually do it, but they can do sitting in the lab itself uh, with the help of the softwares developed by Siemens. So we have uh, the softwares uh, from IBM, we have the softwares from Siemens, and of course we have collaboration with Zivia. You had a small glimpse of that, right? So this is what exactly we are doing in KR Manglam. Uh, to have a more understanding of the department, I will uh, request uh, uh, Jyoti Ma'am to share with us uh, uh, where, uh, what exactly we do in KR Manglam, right? And uh, uh, before I request Jyoti Ma'am, uh, I must thank uh, 
uh, PMM profusely for bringing the word of immersive technology uh, so nicely and with so many examples, so many um, uh, videos, uh, so that we could have a feel of it. Rather, I was feeling a part of it, you know. Uh, exactly. Uh, so. That was so interesting. And I'm so grateful, sir, for having me here and sharing some of my insights on this very interesting technology. Thank you so much. Very great. I wish this session could not end. It was so wonderful. So Thank interesting. You. Very honest. So, so welcome all of you. Let me just take you around through that how School of Engineering and Technology in Kerumangalam University works and what are the what is all SOET, which we call the School of Engineering and Technology. In this, we are having the different departments. The first one is the computer science and engineering. The second one is a civil engineering, electrical and electronics engineering. There is electronics and computer engineering, and there is also the mechanical engineering courses which we offer. Along with that, in these departments, there are the, these are the different streams which are present. One is the BTEC in computer science and engineering. Then there comes the BTEC in mechanical engineering. You can also go for the BTEC in computer science and engineering with specialization in AIML. AIML is artificial intelligence and machine learning. That too, we are having the collaboration with the Symmetrix and the IBM. So they are providing us the support, they are providing us the data, they are providing their facilities, they are giving us their faculties also, you can just come and teach over here to our students that how these companies work about. Then we are having the BTEC in computer science and engineering with specialization in cloud computing and academic support of Zebia. The Zebia, the same person, the Ms. Priyanka ma'am, who was along with us. And she was from, she is from Zevia basically, and she is the one who is providing us all the support in terms of that. Now we are also having the BTEC in computer science and drink with specialization in full stack development of with academic support once again with Zevia only. Then there is the BTEC in electronics and computer engineering, BTEC in civil engineering and specialization in sustainability and smart cities. This course is also offered in PR Maglam University. So this is a very new one and I guess everyone will be very happy about that. Then, apart from the BTECs, we are also having the BSc, BSc Honours in Computer Science with specialization in AI ML, that is again artificial intelligence and machine learning with symmetrics and IBM support. Then there is the BSc Honours in Cyber Security, BSc Honours in Data Science, and again, there is a BCA with specialization in AI and DS along with symmetrics and IBM. We are also offering the postgraduate courses. One is the MTech in Computer Science Engineering, MCA, and also PhD in all the disciplines, whichever I mentioned over here. So if we talk about the USPs of the KR Manglam University, or if we talk about the, especially for the School of Engineering and the School of Engineering and Technology, then the infrastructure over here is amazing, guys. You guys will love it, that how the infrastructure setup is done. We are having the very well-equipped uh, labs, Apple desktops are there, so you can use our labs, you can function at them, you can use it for the coding, for any of the work, and they are open throughout the time. So there is no foundation to that, that the student cannot use the labs if he's not having the lecture. No, it's not over here. The student can use the labs whenever they want to use it. They can do the hands-on practice with everything. They can learn the new technologies over here, and everything is absolutely, you can say, the accessible over in the Kermanglam University. Then we talk about the collaborations. So the, these are the few companies with which we are having the collaborations. We are having the collaboration with the Siemens, with Sapia, with Bosch, with IBM, Symmetric, C-Tech, Noida, ICT, and 2 skills and so many more. They are countless and we are still looking forward to have some more new collaborations for our students so that they can learn in a very better way. And they can come to know that how the companies work and how they can work along with them. So all these things are possible. Now, let me take you to the events. Now, in, this is just a small brief that from the month of January to March, these are the events, are very selected events I'm showing over here. These are the three months data, that's it. That which type of events occur in the School of Engineering and Technology in KR Mangalam University. So we are not confined only to the theory part or to the practical, that's it. No, it's not here. We are also with some other things as well that so that the student can enjoy being here, student would love to be here, and students say that, okay, fine, I'm also a bit relaxed now. 
So if we just have a look, that we have a workshop on the full stack that was with the Gapcut, a known company, as you all know. Then we are also providing the internships that was under Voyans. Then there were the field visits, many field visits done over here so that students can came to know that how actually in general, so how actually you can say the factories or how can say the industries work. So students can have a feel about that. Then in the month of the February, we organized a hackathon event. In that event, there were multiple events inside that. The student can learn how to go. They perform dance, they perform singing. There was a debate competition and so many things were there. So just like the quiz blob, quiz blob was organized by the CSI society. We are having different clubs and societies over here. So they organize different, different events on the time banking, sometimes the technical events, sometimes just for the fun sake events. So they organize that. Now there's a show your moves that the dance competition. So the students get also get chill that, okay, fine. This is something also happening. They can just light their weight. They can just feel them less burdened. They can enjoy and like this. Then let me just take you to the Alibaba Cloud Code Development Competition. This competition was uh, basically occurred in the month of March. And in this competition, two of our students also won a handsome money amount. They were, uh, one was the second and the one was the runner up for that. And they all, they all basically, they received a very good uh, cash money as well as there were so many the other opportunities that they can perform in the next level also. Then these are the few of the strengths of our here Manglam University for the SOET department that we are having the very qualified and the, you can see the very dedicated faculty members are there who are there to help you in all the manners which is possible for them. Then laboratories and laboratories are very upgraded. They are with the latest one with the all technologies, for, for, uh, you can see the facility available. Then there is a mentor mentee program. In this mentor mentee program, basically what happens, we a lot a few students to a particular faculty so whatever the doubts they are having whatever the queries they are having regarding anything either it's with their slavers either it's with some sort of the academic with the management with any kind of the facilities which we are having in the university so they can talk to that particular faculty and that faculty tries their level best to resolve their issues so this is just like uh, that you are having another parent inside the campus who is dealing with all your problems, who is taking care of you in a very well manner. Then in this university, we are also having the ICT teaching learning. We are having the projectors. We are having the smart, uh, you can see the cameras and the smart TVs are there to just give you a better view. Then workforce commitment is also obviously there and the placements, a very lucrative part which all students look out for, that the placement should be in a very good manner. So yes, it is done over here in a very good manner. We are having the place, we have placed our students in a very, you can see the reputed uh, industries and students are very happy about that with a handsome package salary in their hand. Uh, one of our students from engineering only, he got a package of 24 lakhs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that I will show you again in that, that one of our student got a package of 24 lakhs is absolutely right. And these are the companies with which we are having the tie-ups, which see the, for the placements, these companies came to our campus or the students visit their industries and the students get places. There's the Tech Mahindra, there's the Juba, JK Super Cement, there's the Speedways, TCS, Ultratech Cements, Genpec, Wipro, Air India. So n number of the companies are basically presented. Now, when we are learning towards how basically the industry oriented approach, so we are not giving them just that how to go through the study material and just uh, go appear for your interview. No, we are preparing our students in a very different way manners, just like the hackathon, which was, uh, you can say the event organized. So in that event also, we were promoting or we were encouraging our students that you should go through these topics, you should go through these quizzes so that this thing will elaborate your memory and these things will elaborate your knowledge. So we are trying very different manners. We are giving them research work. We are giving them case studies. We are telling them that you should be prepared with your soft skills also, so that when you enter into an industry area after completing your graduation or post-graduation from our university, you guys should have a knowledge of how to present yourself. You should be capable enough to do that. It's not like that you have done only the academic part, but you are not able to present it to. No. We are preparing our students in that manner that they should be presentable in the industry sector also. That when you move out from the university, you are all in one, in a one go. 
so as you see that uh, in sync with the industry specifically we are telling uh, the students to do some machine learning security iot chat box cloud computing these are all the new terminologies which are coming blockchain full stack development so we are preparing our students to just have a look to just work around with them to just to have a touch upon all these technologies also because this is the new one now if we talk about that the which the mentor mentee which is our one of our usp that how this process goes on so basically for student basic we are having the mentor ratio of 1 ratio 20 that is for one faculty or you can say that for 20 students we are allocating one dedicated faculty and he or she they try their level best to the weekly mentor queue they ask you sir or uh, uh, student what is your problem in which area you are facing any trouble or are you comfortable in the university or you have some sort of the issue so the student basically shared all their details whatever the issues they have and the faculty try their level best to resolve the issues and also identify that what is the potential inside the student which we could use in another better way so if we found that a student is very good in something then we encourage that student that okay fine you should go for this coding part because you are very good with this particular language or if you are in some other category so you should go for this one we are also giving them a mentoring part that okay fine this is good so please go for it don't look behind that then the future plans which we are having that we are having the MOOC courses, the faculty enrichment programs and some more research projects we are looking for and we are already having a few of them along with us and still we are want to just inculcate more so that our students get more knowledge. That's all about the engineering uh, SOET department sir, the School of Engineering and Technology. So like the, by the next, let me take you all to the university presentation one more time that how our university basically looks like and how it works so that you can see that how things go about that. So this one is our university presentation. See, in our, as I told you that our campus is really mesmerizing. It's so beautiful. It's spread around 26 acre campus. We are having 150 plus faculty members. We are having 11 different schools over here. And presently, more than 3,000 students are already enrolled and they are getting their knowledge. So if you just look at the campus, we are having the different blocks, the canteen, the cafeteria part, the lush green gardens, the football courts, or you can see the hostels, all the facilities are really mesmerizing. And we're having a very amazing, we would love that once you just come to our campus and just have a look and just visit around the campus and you can see by yourself that how beautiful it looks like. So these are all the courses which uh, we are offering. We are offering different courses in the School of Engineering and Technology, which I just mentioned along with all of you. Then in the Management and Commerce also, we are having the BBA that is available in HR, Marketing, Finance, International Business, Travel and Tourism. We are having BBA with specialization in Business Intelligence Analytics with academic, again, support of Symmetrics and IBM. Then we are having the BCom honors with the support of NSE. We have the BCom program with preparations for the competitive exam so that you can prepare for the banking, insurance, railway, for your central and the state government jobs. Then there is an integrated BBA plus MBA course that is in a, along with the collaboration of the IBM. Then we are having the MBA with academic support with the IBM and we are also offering the MCom course. Now, if we look at the basics and applied sciences, we are having the BSc honors, that is we are offering in the physics, chemistry, maths, and again, we are providing support to all the different types of jobs, the government jobs, which are looking out. We have BSc honors in forensic science, we have MSc honors, which is also available as a part time. We are having the medical and the elite life sciences, we are having B Pharma, G Pharma, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Masters of Pharmacy. Then in the agriculture science, we are having BSc honors agriculture. If we talk about the architecture and design, then we are having the B Bachelor of Architecture, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Interior Design, BSc honors in interior design, BA fashion design, Bachelors of Design in games and animation in association with images. So this is the new one which is coming because now the games and animation is something which is very up to the market or which is very new and there will be many more jobs into the market for this one. We have professional diploma in interior design also. If we talk about the legal studies, then we are offering BBA LLB 
we are offering bcom llb ba llb honors llb honors and also the llb the post graduate course if we talk about the journalism and mass communication so we are having the ba in journalism and mass communication and we are also offering the masters in that that is ma in journals and mass communication let us talk about the humanities then be honors in english economics psychology chinese this is present we are talk about the if we talk about ba honors political science then again this is here we talk about the ba program with uh, for the preparations for all the exams that which i have told you earlier we are having ma english we are having ma economics and we are also having ma applied psychology now the sector comes up is the education so bachelor of elementary education is here bachelors of education is offering and the ma masters in education is also there let us talk about the hotel management catering and technology then bachelors of hotel management catering technology is offering in our university and doctor, doctoral programs that is we are offering phd post graduate degree in all the disciplines which are present so if you just look at this thing that there are the so many courses which are offering almost in every field we are offering a course to you whichever field you are feel comfortable you can just opt for that and dr manglam is having that course so these are the few collaborations which we are having and many more apart from that which some i told you earlier and some of these the ibm symmetric simons linkedin nsc with the denik bhaskar sism shops so we are having so many different collaborations with all inside the kr manglam university we are also having one e yantra robotics lab so this is as you all know that the technology is you can see the searching into a new part and we are having so many different things which are coming up among those technologies robotics plays a very important role so we are oh, we have also a designated library uh, laboratory for that which is known as the e yantra laboratory then there some of our distinguished professors uh, professors are there mr vikram achar professor sunita sinsen gupta dr shiv kumar kaushik and many more so these are the few of the distinguished professors which we are having along with us in kr bangla there is also thing is the smart ashram this is a new pedagogy which we have created you can see the start there that is the smart ashram everything you can see the different area inside that the things are in a they are presented in a different way in up to the you can say along with the new technology we are showing them so that the concept is same with the ashram but it is a smart ashram because we have used technology in a very innovative manner over here so that's why it's a smart ashram technique now beyond academics we are having the different industry connects we are having mentor mentee program which i explain different community uh, connects we are present clubs and society in different manners computer science society there is the nsc society then we organize so many health camps over here the blood donation this pic was just uh, against about two months back we organized a one so it's present let us talk about the international exposure so we do have tie ups with different university the university of melbourne university of florida norway university middle east university university of houston different along with different university we are having tie ups and our student exchange programs happen that is students from their university come to our campus and students from our university go to their campus and just exchange and their thoughts their knowledge and interact with them so that they can learn something new apart from which they are learning in our university these are the some of the testimonials of the different students there is a student abhinav anand from the btech csc he is the one who just got a package of 24 lakh then there is dipanshu jyoti he is a mba and he is presently as a very good position in canada then there is a un kickoff from the bar and he is having a beautiful scholarship along with him then we have a mohammad yusuf he is a, from the bb and he is a entrepreneur now so see the students from the different areas they are doing so well who have just passed out from our university so just to placement thing the students which will look about to the most that how the placements will go so see the placements are very beautiful 90 up uh, more than 90% very proudly to say that more than 90% of our students got placed in a very good companies the, the highest package which went was the 24 lakh per annum more than 400 companies visit our campus and they basically take our students along with them they give them the opportunity 
to join them and total offers were more than 600 plus so the students is not have it restricted only with the com one company they are having more than one offers also sometimes if a student is very good if he is very interactive then obviously he'll get so many offers for that now these are some of the recruiters who came to our campus hcl is there then the india Bulls is there genpact is there optra outlook drishti abstra i mean so many more i can just name them i guess everything is over here which you can see now let's just take you to the admission process that how you can go for the administration uh, at admission into our university so first you have to just have as now we are having the online facility also so you can just fill up the form you can just book an appointment uh, with the admission team they will uh, after registration uh, with us, you will appear for our admission test. You will be having an interview. Either you can come to our campus or you can have an online interview. And when the interview gets clear, then you, with the help of the admission team, you can just pay your fees and join our university. So the process is very smooth. It's very simple. The user interface is very interactive. You can just go through the website and you can just do that process very easily. So if we compare that why our university is best in terms of the uh, amount which we are taking in terms of the fee structure which we are taking. So as you can see that comparatively to the other universities, if we're talking about the universities, Haryana, Delhi, UP, Punjab, Rajasthan, Bihar, this is just a small comparison. You can see that our university is providing you the best price for that. That the fee structure over here is very less as compared to the other universities and that too we are providing so many facilities to you so many facilities we are trying our level best to give the best to our students so that they can meet up to the utmost settlement now the scholarship part is also very good one over here that the students who are basically the, the UG students the undergraduate students can earn a scholarship up to 100 percent if he is very good with his, uh, if he's very good with his academics, he earned a very good percentage in class 12, so he can get a scholarship up to up to 100%. There is a 50% scholarship also for the siblings, you are having your brother or sister over here, so this 50% scholarship will be given to you. We are having 50% scholarship for the sports quota, that those students who are very good with sports, they can have a 50% scholarship in our university. There is a 50% scholarship for the defense personnel student, uh, children, those parents or uh, those students whose parents are in the defense area, defense line, they can have a uh, uh, scholarship of 15%. Now we are having the special financial aid to the students who are passed out from the KR Manglam schools. As you all know that we are also having schools which are running. So if you are passed out from a KR Manglam schools, we are having the special financial aid to them. We are also having the fast track basically admission uh, with the help of the CVT. If you have cleared that, then it's a fast track admission process and it's very easy to go about. So over here, you can just uh, go to the phone number, you are having the email ID, we are, you can, as you can see that there is a website link, there is a Facebook link, there is a YouTube link. So please just scroll through them. And uh, if you feel that any of your courses is suitable for you, then you can have them and our admission team will help you in that. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Jyoti, ma'am for this very beautiful presentation. And I would like to thank each one of you for your kind presence and patience hearing. I would like to especially thank Ms. Priyanka ma'am for his views on immersive technology. Uh, and I hope the, the listeners uh, and the viewers will be, uh, will be helping out of this. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ashok, sir, for being here, for guiding us. It was seriously a very good webinar, which we had. Thank you, Arvind, sir, Shiram, sir, and the very thanks to the Priyanka ma'am because her insightful, knowledge, thoughtful notes, they seriously helped us a lot to understand that how actually this tech immersive technologies are changing, that how they're changing everything over here. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here, for making this webinar successful. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.